So we're doing a sample problem of question two, where I made up some data like this. And we wanted to run a regression. OLS is a form of regression, so just do run a regression to determine the inverse demand function. P is a function of Q. So my P variable will be my dependent variable. I'm gonna go here and I will my so my Y range will be the P's. My X range will be the Q's. I'm hitting the labels. My output I will put right here. I'll hit OK. Get rid of some junk we don't need. And some more junk. Okay. <clears throat> How much confidence do you have in this estimated equation? Well, the R squared is pretty, can't get much better. And my R squareds are in the 0.99s, so you can't do a whole lot better than that. So those are good, and my coefficient is negative. I expected Q to be negative because of the law of demand. I have a positive intercept, which is good, because I expect this line, if I think about a demand curve that slopes down, it's got to have some positive Y intercept, so that's good that that's not negative. My T statistic for Q is pretty huge. Q is also significant, it's below 1% even, so it's very significant. So I would say I would have a, a pretty good degree of confidence in this estimated equation. Not perfect, but very, very high degree of confidence in this estimated equation. So let me write it out then, because uh, I did say use algebra to find the direct demand function. So let me just write this out. P equals, and I'll round, 53.7 minus 0.02 Q. So we call this the inverse demand function. Then I said use algebra to find the direct demand function. So to get my direct demand function, I would, again, I want to get Q as some function of P. So I'll, just, I'll throw the Q on the other side, 0.02 Q equals 53.7 minus P. So then Q equals uh, 53.7 divided by 0.02 Q minus um, P over 0.02 Q. Uh, 0.02. So we could also write this as Two six eight five that might be rounded also minus fifty p. Okay, and I said not to do this. You could, it's it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect uh, relationship between these two because the r squared is not one. So if I were to run a regression with q as my dependent and p as my independent, I would get coefficients that are probably pretty close to this, but they're not going to be exact. Just because again the relationship isn't perfect. Um, that's basically what I meant by using algebra to find that. Then <clears throat> use calculus to determine dq, dp. So find dq, dp. And I'm doing this, why? Because I'm figuring out, trying to figure out maximizing total revenue. Um, you're figuring out the point price elasticities which depend on this derivative. Uh, maximizing the total revenue depends on the derivative. So it's nice to have that. It's nice to know what that is. Um, so, well, dq, the q equation, again, this notation here, find the dq over dp means find the derivative of the q equation with respect to the p variable. You're just figuring out, well, what's the derivative of this q equation with respect to p, and it's just minus 50. Construct a column which calculates the point price elasticity for each p and q combination. So, point price elasticity. So dq dp, or the derivative of q with respect to p, times p over q. So I know that I've got, you know, I know this, this first term here, dq dp is always going to be negative 50. So if I were to make a point price, point p elasticity column, well, it would be negative 50 times, and you could just do that p over q. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show the rest of those because that'll give too much away, and I already gave too much away already. So, 
what's the point price elasticity when demand when price equals 83 well there is no 83 here but you have all the information that you need to be able to figure out what it is because you will you have your equations here so you, once you have the regression results then you know, once you have this direct demand function and inverse demand function then you should be able to solve for any price quantity combination if someone told you well if the price is $83 or here if the price was um, $20 or $19 I could pretty easily figure out what it is because <clears throat> I um, if P equals 19, then Q equals what? And I could say, I know, well, that's kind of backwards a little bit. <clears throat> I solve these directly here, though. So I'm going to say equals that my, uh, minus 50 times 19. So if price equals 19, I'll use my little direct demand function here. So I've got the 2685 that I'm referring to minus this 50 times $19. And I'm doing that because I don't know if these, are, these may have been rounded a little bit. I'm just going to refer to them directly. Times my $19 price because I've got minus 50p. 1735. That's probably <clears throat> not really in line with what I've got going on here because when I had, I mean, it's declining. If I had $19 price around here, it actually should be a little bit bigger than 1750 even. But unless I did something wrong, um, I would chalk it up to the fact that these aren't perfectly described. I mean, my R squared is not one. So there's going to be a little bit of degree of, of error that's in there. That's probably as far as I want to go, unless someone else has other questions on question number two, problem number two.